Since we need so much magnesium each day, you can't just sneak it into a multivitamin, eat junk food, and call it a day. You either need to eat foods high in magnesium, which is difficult with our current soil depletion problem, or you need to supplement magnesium with say like 200 milligrams, a 200 milligram pill, which is a single pill by itself, a full pill just dedicated to magnesium. Let's talk about it. So magnesium is the fourth most abundant mineral in our bodies after calcium, potassium, and sodium. All of these minerals store up in our bones, so our bodies are like a bank account for minerals. You don't need 100% daily value every single day provided you've deposited a good amount of surplus in your health account. If you're already in debt, it's a real problem for your overall health, and many people are in health debt. According to a study done by the Linus Pauling Institute with 16,444 people, 52% of toddlers are under the age of five do not get their daily requirement of magnesium, and it's 35.5% for older children and 60.9% of American adults over age 19. 609 do not get their daily requirement, 16.9% for magnesium. And by the way, literally 97.6% of people in the adult category are not getting adequate potassium. So I'll do a separate video on that because you can't supplement your way out of potassium deficiencies or you give yourself a heart attack. You need almost five grams a day and the FDA doesn't allow more than 0.1 grams per day in supplements, about 100 milligrams. Really the moral of the story is when you start to understand diet, nutrients, and vitamins, a calorie is not just a calorie and you can't supplement your way out of a poor diet. You can't even fortify your way out of a poor diet by creating highly profitable, shelf-stable, processed junk food and then adding a bunch of synthetic, highly profitable, petroleum-based fake vitamins back into that highly processed junk food. It doesn't work that way. It never will. If you want energy, good hormones, sharp brain performance, great mood, zero prescription drugs, you have to eat healthy foods grown on healthy organic soil, period. And before we move away from the Linus Pauling study, it's predictable but worth noting that over 90% of people are deficient in vitamin D and E, and also vitamin K is pretty terrible too because people don't eat fermented foods in our modern culture. So our magnesium status as a society isn't the worst in standard American diets, but it's bad. Now, like I said, the optimal method for getting nutrients is to simply eat foods raised on rich organic healthy soil. But this is true of magnesium just like anything else. Raw dairy is an excellent source of magnesium, especially if the cows are eating healthy, diverse plants on healthy soil. And leafy greens are also a rich source of magnesium, although the magnesium there isn't going to be as bioavailable in greens and other plant foods compared to animal products because the magnesium there is all wrapped up in plant fiber, and we're gonna poop a lot of it out, so keep that in mind. Animal products are always the most bioavailable for vitamins because we are animals. So what about blood testing your magnesium to learn where you stand? Magnesium blood testing is notoriously inaccurate. It's challenging to know if you're in the optimal range because magnesium doesn't just sit around in your blood. It builds up in your bones, like I mentioned, and it goes inside your cells, and only about 1% is in your blood. But one way you know if you're deficient in magnesium is if you take a magnesium supplement and you feel a massive difference, you're probably severely deficient. Uh, you can also do a magnesium loading test where the lab gives you a dose of magnesium and then they measure how much you urinate out. You can do this with oral magnesium or an IV, but since 99.9% .9 of people aren't going to do this, you should probably just check out the foods you're commonly eating and what's the magnesium content of those foods and factor in your soil quality. Like if you have an organic farmer or an organic garden, and you buy foods from local farmers, you're probably good. I personally supplement magnesium even though I grow and shoot a lot of my own food. And you may not need to take a supplement, but you might want to to be safe like I do. So on the topic of supplements, since magnesium is a metal, it needs to be combined with something before you can take it as a supplement. It can be combined with oxygen gas using heat, which makes magnesium oxide, but that's strongly distressing for your gut lining. So I don't think magnesium oxide is a great choice. It triggers loose stools or diarrhea in people, but I personally believe this is because the gut's trying to expel that stuff. It's, try, it's just harsh on the gut lining. Uh, similarly, magnesium citrate is popular, 
and I even recommend it to people occasionally. This is magnesium combined with citric acid, magnesium citrate. And I especially recommend it to people that struggle with constipation because citric acid loosens stools. The problem with magnesium citrate is citric acid is virtually never purified from citrus fruits. 99% of the time, citrate is purified from black mold, aspergillum niger. Niger is the Latin word for black. And similar to magnesium oxide, I think people get loose stools from magnesium citrate because their gut lining is reacting to some of that residual mold toxin and they're trying to expel it out, especially since more and more people are becoming sensitive to molds, even in trace amounts. So if you struggle with constipation, magnesium will help because it's an electrolyte, but it shouldn't be used as an immediate bowel evacuation event. And the mold toxins in magnesium citrate are probably coming in extremely trace amounts, so I wouldn't worry too much about it. But I also don't trust America in doing a good job checking for purity of citric acid coming from China purified from mold toxins and remember from my book Esther Generation where uh, this whole process is spelled out Europe regulates the mold toxin levels of their animal feeds stricter than we regulate the human food for mold toxins specifically xerolinone the toxin messes up your hormones so long story short is I suggest taking magnesium glycate glycinate and additional electrolytes that have a lot of sodium if you have constipation stay hydrated and if you continue to have constipation, you probably have some underlying gut issues, in which case you need to fix that at the root cause level, not just supplement magnesium citrate. And since people will ask, how do you look at the root cause level, you should probably consider doing a DNA consult directly with me and we can investigate your situation deeper rather than expecting that I'll understand and solve your problems with a quick comment down below amidst the dumpster fire of other comments from vegans and social media bot accounts. But anyway, Magnesium oxide off the table, magnesium citrate better, but still off the table most of the time. Let's dive into the two forms of magnesium that most health optimizers recommend and take themselves. Magnesium threonate and magnesium glycinate. Magnesium combined with threonic acid is called magnesium threonate. This form is popular mainly because of money and marketing. It's a big money maker because it's created, it was created at MIT and it's been patented since 2010. Magnesium threonate is also called magteen, in case you run into that and wonder. The magteen MIT claim is it crosses your blood-brain barrier better. It gets to your brain better than other types of magnesium. That's mainly what's pushed in the marketing campaigns. But this claim has only been tested in rats, and it's mainly been tested by comparing magnesium threonate against a few types of magnesium that virtually nobody takes as supplements namely magnesium chloride and magnesium sulfate, which are forms of magnesium that literally nobody takes. And it's also important to mention there was one study in 2016 that did a test deep into the research study where they tested magnesium threonate, citrate, gluconate, malate, and glycinate using confocal microscopy looking at synaptic density. And they claim there's differences, but I've personally done hundreds of hours of confocal microscopy. And when you're literally just looking at four cover slips like this, like four microscope cover slips, you can almost find anything you want. I'm not convinced of anything from this study, and no good histology expert would be convinced either. That's why the title of the study is so obtuse and non-committal, because they really didn't present solid evidence. And I mentioned earlier, but all these mag teen studies have been done on rats, and who knows how much different their bodies process magnesium compared to humans. The point is, I'm not sold on the evidence I'm seeing, but if you're sold on it, if you are sold on Magteen, I don't have any major issues with it. Uh, if you're going to donate extra money to patent holders of magnesium 3 and 8, good for you. An interesting update on this topic uh, is the, the Magteen patent is expiring now. So therefore, the cash cow is starting to dry up. And in 2022, they've developed a new Magteen combined with phosphatidylserine. Uh, they're calling it Magteen PS. So predictably, they're suddenly finding Magteen is basically useful, <laughs> useless for memory and human memory tests, but suddenly the Magteen PS is giving significant benefits. Keep in mind, you can find mathematical significance just about anywhere you look. When scientists say it was significant, they mean it fits a mathematical model. They don't mean it was mind-blowing or it was extremely effective or something like that. They're talking about math, the significance. But if you start hearing guys like Andrew Huberman suddenly start promoting Magteen PS, 
the new must-have brain boosting whatever even though it costs a significant more amount more now you know why the patents expiring patents expire every 20 years it's just the way it works my personal form favorite form of magnesium is magnesium glycinate I usually recommend and take 200 milligrams depending on body weight magnesium glycinate is magnesium combined with glycine which is an amino acid it's found at high levels in collagen, for example. Magnesium glycinate has amazing bioavailability. It's not a laxative. It was never patented because it's a natural compound. And in addition, magnesium glycinate is especially excellent for sleep because when your body separates these two things, the magnesium and the glycine, they both promote sleep. Magnesium calms your nervous system. And then glycine is an inhibitory neurotransmitter calms you down also some people literally take just glycine as a supplement for sleep independent of the magnesium and there are even genetic issues some people have for sleep disorders for example the gene BHLHE41 um, where glycine is especially critical and glycine enhances REM sleep and helps your body regulate temperature thermal regulation while you're sleeping so glycine is good magnesium glycine is good glycine is also known for healing your gut lining so it has all kinds of extracurricular benefits so anyway that's my take on magnesium get it from your diet as much as you can and take any form of magnesium supplements you want but i recommend magnesium glycinate and i hope this video helps you understand why